Okay. All right, so now that was, we came up with seven for the soul urge. Right, which good. Which here. Okay, now for the expression, we're gonna have all these numbers on the bottom, all the letters. Um, so let's see, well, those are some long names, okay. <laughs> all right, <clears throat> five plus five is 10, 11 plus six is 15. 11 uh, plus six is 17. I mean, 17, <laughs> God. <laughs> That's okay, you're probably thinking nine plus six. Yeah, yeah, I was like looking at the wrong thing, okay. 17 plus 3 is 20, plus 4 is 24, plus 6 is 30, plus 9 is 39, which goes to a 12, which goes to a 3. Yeah, 3 for the first name. Um, I like starting with the big numbers, so we got mm -hmm. 9 times 3 is 27, 6 plus 4 is 10, that's easy, um, so 7 plus three is 10 plus one, so we've got like 21 plus 27, eight, 48, eight plus four is 12, which becomes a three, so we've got another three. So three plus three is, oops, six for the expression. And then that leaves the life path and the birthday, so of course the birthday is 11. And um, the life path will be 11 plus 11 plus, do you know off the top of your head what 1974 is, Steve? Yes, I do. It's three. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I hate those years. Those are the worst for me. Okay. So 11 plus 11 is 22 plus three is 25, which becomes a seven. So that would be a life path of seven. My messy writing. There we go. Seven. Very good. And let me let me let you in on a little um, secret. If you want to do the um, the calculation in your head, um, this really comes in handy. Uh, just memorizing, just taking this in in twos. Because remember, you're usually going to be doing this in your head. You're not going to even be looking at it. So you need to be able to visualize this because usually it'll be at a party and you start doing numerology and people are going to come up to you, do my numbers, do my numbers. And so you can write them all down, but it's it's faster if you do them in your head and you're just saying, tell me your birth date and you calculate it and then you tell them the number, then you talk about the number, then you move on to the next person. You just do life path, life path, life path, that's it. So in my mind, the way even if I had to calculate this, the way I visualize it in my mind is two halves. 19, that's always going to be equal to a 10. 1 plus 9, it's, it's always 10. So half of it's already done. Adding anything to 10 is easy. 7 plus 4, I just have that memorized. That's 11. 7 plus 4 is 11. So I have 10 plus 11. That's 21. 21 is 2 plus 1, which is 3. So it helps if you're doing this in your head to compartmentalize things as much as possible. Keep now, now for numeric, uh, for adding purposes in numerology, we must keep these columns separated. We must keep day, month, and year columns separated until we have a final number one through nine or a master number 11 or 22, and then we combine. We must do that, otherwise we'll have a mathematical error. But you can also compartmentalize a little further in your mind by saying, all right, that's already done. That's a 10. Anyone born in 19 something or other, it's always going to be 10. Now when you get into, you know, we're having more and more people born year 2000 or, or later, that's a little more challenging to work with, a 2. Adding a 2 to something is a little harder than adding a 10 to something. But 10 is really easy to work with. So you got a 10 and then you memorize this, 7 plus 4 is 11. And then you, all you're doing is adding a 10 plus 11. That's 21. 2 plus 1 is very easy to add. That's a 3. So make it as easy as possible. But the real trick is doing it over and over and doing as many as you possibly can to really get used to it. Okay, so where does that leave us? We've got all these numbers here. And, and the core elements. We've got the core elements. Okay, so now let's do a his and hers comparison. Okay. Uh, let's do uh, Kate and Leonardo. Okay, and let's put our life path expression soul urge. So 
So we've got, so can I, these will just be this just in the same order as they are here. So this will be the life path. Okay. Expression, soul urge, birthday. Leo's got seven, six, seven, eleven. Okay, so now we've got some information that we can look at as we analyze the two of them together. Okay, so our chart has grown a little bit. We're going to look at the maturity number and the secret self, something that uh, we haven't looked at yet. What secrets do they have? <laughs> Especially when we look at the secrets of a Scorpio. It could be, could be interesting. Okay. All right, so the maturity number, remember what that is, Sarah? I believe that is the life path plus the expression. Right, just adding them up okay. and looking for karma if it's there. All right, so for Kate, we've got... Um, Four plus one, which should be five. And then for Leo, we've got seven plus six, which is 13. That's a karmic number, I believe, yes. isn't it? But it turns to a four, so we've got. Right, okay, so there's no karma in this. It's just, we just got four plus one. There's, uh, but there is karma here, so the, we'll talk about all that in a minute. Let's get the secret self. Now the secret self is a there should be lights flashing. It's a bonus one <laughs> that you're going to learn for the first time. The secret self uh, talks about the carries with it the idea of inner urges uh, that you that you keep secret. Now you may wonder how does that relate to the soul urge? Well, the soul urge is something that you want to do. It's a motivation, but it's not really something that you're hiding or something that you don't know about. Sometimes the secret self is a secret even to you, even to the individual possible that they don't even know their secret selves. But your soul urge you usually do know about and everyone else usually knows about it also because it's a motivator. It's something that, that drives you. It's something that, that is fairly clear. So the secret self is derived similarly to the soul urge. The soul urge is, all, is from all the vowels of the name. The secret self is just from all the consonants of the name. Consonants of both names, so the first and the last. And if there were a middle or you know, two middle names, we'd look at all of those also. Okay, that's the first name. Now let's look at the last name. All right, the last name, we've got five plus five is 10, plus one is 11, plus three is 14, 15 is 16, six plus one is seven, seven plus four is 11. So okay. That's, so that's... Now we did have a karmic number in there. We did have a 16 that we got the seven from, but it's so far back in there that I'm not going to uh, concern myself with it in something like this. If I were doing a detailed reading for Kate Winslet, then I would, but here we're just trying to get an idea of how the two of them get along. So, okay. all right, let's do Leo here. So secret self is 11 derived from the consonants in the name. Okay, again, looking at just the consonants. Okay, so I'm adding up my green numbers. So I've got 5 plus 4 is 9, 9 plus 9 is 18, 19, 20, 21. So that becomes a 3. Right. And then we've got, uh, let's see, 9 plus 7 is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, which becomes a 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. So Leo has an 8. Okay, 14. So you, so here I'm getting four plus three is seven, plus another seven is 14, plus nine is 23, and seven plus seven is 14, plus nine is 23, so it's two plus three is five. Right. So I wanted to give, give the viewer a little bit of insight into this because you can look at these numbers and this this kind of becomes a challenge you're probably realizing this too sarah that when mm -hmm. you look at all these numbers you think well where do i start what am i going to add am i going to add all the nines together all the you know how am i going to do this again it's good to compartmentalize if you can get things down to some kind of science that works for you and be consistent with it you'll save yourself a lot of time in addition now again i never do this in my head but when i'm looking at it it's nice if I have quick ways to do it. So what I'm looking for are pairs of things that go together. I see, I know that four plus three is seven. I mean, I just, we all know that, but I, I know it, I have it memorized. It's just, when I look at a four and a three, I see a seven. So when I see two sevens together, that's easy for me 
that's 14. I know that for, I know that anything when you add a 9 to it, let's say you have a 14 and you add a 9 to it, becomes the next number up minus 1. Okay, so adding 9 to anything then becomes very straightforward because when you add when you can get something down to something that you're just adding 9 to, it's very nice. For example, we have 4 plus 3, which in my mind is 7 automatically. Then I see another 7. Bam, that's 14. Okay, so now I have 14, now I have a 9. I love 9s because it's so easy to add anything to a 9. So I have 14, and then I'm adding a 9. What happens when you add a 9 to something? The first number increases, the second number decreases. That's all that happens. What if I were to add 9 to that? What happens? The first number increases by 1 every time. The second number decreases by 1 every time. What if I were to add 9 to this? The first number increases by 1. The second number decreases by 1. You see how easy it is to add 9 to anything. So these little time savers really help. You'll develop your own. I just want to let you in on a little insight as to how I add because as you're noticing also, Sarah, when you look at something, it can be kind of daunting. It just looks like a bunch of numbers and where do I start and what do I do with all these numbers? And sometimes you catch a lucky break. Sometimes, for example, you know, there are a bunch of fives. Well, go ahead and grab those. Add all of those together. That's, that's easy. Anytime you see a bunch of numbers, go ahead and add them all together first because you just take that number and multiply it by however many there are. That's really easy. But then look for these little pairings. I see a six and a four at the, end, at the end here. That's 10. That's right, that's 10 in my mind. So 10 is a great number to work with also, just like nine. It's so easy to add it to anything. But look for other little numbers that go together to equal 10. That's kind of nice. Or to equal numbers that you want to work with. Like the four, I see a seven. If I can make another seven, I'm, I'm doing really well. I can, bam, I got two sevens. Adding together 14, adding nine to anything is easy because the first number increases by one, the second number decreases by one. These are the types of routines you should be developing in your mind as you get into advanced numerology that are going to save you a lot of time. So let me turn this back over to you. Okay. Turn the keys back over to you. All right, um, well, I, well, I got as far as, as we were going with this part, I think we've got both of their maturity numbers and both of their secret selves. Okay, so we've got a lot of information and let's keep going, let's get more information. Okay, so for, for the next steps, uh, what I'd like to look at would be uh, first letter, first vowel, and I'd also like to look at the temperaments, and then later on we're going to look at effectiveness. So Sarah, if you could set us up for that, I'd sure. be grateful. All right. Sarah, you no problem. are faster than ever. Okay, so now we have everything. We can look at the first letter, first vowel. We can get the temperaments here, emotional, physical, intuitive, and mental, and calculate effectiveness. And we can compare every, everything on both sides and see what we're looking at. Now, we could, if we wanted to... Now, if you're thinking of comparing the two people and you, and you don't want to go through all of this, what I recommend doing would be just comparing effectiveness and the core elements and that's it. Because really, if we wanted to make this even longer, we could, we can compare a lot of different things in addition to this, a lot of things that you know how to compare. So there are a lot of things we could do with this, but we are looking at some, some really detailed stuff here without, without overdoing it, in my opinion. And this is really nice. If you wanna do a, a reading for two people, or you know, someone comes to you and says, hey, I'm thinking of dating so-and-so, what do you think? And you can say, well, it doesn't matter what I think. What's their name? Okay. And uh, it's best if you're not working with celebrities to, uh, to work with their, their actual name at birth, unless, they're, unless they've really made that change, unless they're actually you know, using that name. But some people don't use their middle name, for example. If they're celebrities, then the world is constantly, like Leonardo DiCaprio, the world is constantly calling him Leonardo DiCaprio, Leonardo DiCaprio. That's how he thinks of himself. That's how he defines himself. So he's effectively made that change. If you're not dealing with someone who's a celebrity, keep in mind they do have a middle name or maybe even two middle names, so you should use those. But in something like this, it's just branded. It's, it's out there so much in the universe that the energy has effectively changed for Leonardo, having lost his middle name. And what is, do you know his middle name? I don't know if he has one. If he, who knows? <laughs> or if that is his real name, I have no idea. See, see how prevalent it is? <laughs> the, that's the way we think of him. 
Kate Winslet probably has a middle name. Do you know it? Nope. I don't know it either. So <laughs> they're they're just they're just really branded as those people. So the energy has actually changed. But with everyday folks, if you're looking at them, use their middle name. Still use their middle name. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got. Now we go through right. a little more. Let's start at the top and work our way down. So the first letter in Kate's name so is K, K, which is a two. Two, okay, and the first, first uh, vowel. Or should we do Leo? It doesn't matter. Okay. Either way. Let's do Leo. His first letter is an L, which gets a three. Okay. And then Kate's first vowel is an A, which is a one. Okay. And Leo's is an E, which gets a five. Okay. All right. Now we get into a little bit of work here, where we put all our lines and cross them out and figure out what we've got. Okay. okay. All right. So for Kate. Starting with Kate, looking at just her name, we're looking at all of the letters in her name and seeing where how these often. letters are in there, how often these letters show up in each category. Right, okay. So we're going to start with her letters instead of these letters much faster. Right. So, so we've got K, we've got one K, which goes right here, so that gets a mark. I'm going to cross that off. We've got an A, which we see here for mental. Yep. And we've got two T's here. T is right there. Yep. And E, two E's, one, two. E. And W, another one for there. W. And an I. I goes here for mental. And we've got an S, which is up here, emotional. And an L. Where's the L? Down here. Okay. So we've got. We got a um, four. Four for emotional temperament, three, three for physical, physical temperament, one for intuitive temperament, and three for mental temperament. Okay, so we'll we'll get into the meaning of all this after we get all the numbers on the board. Right. Oh, very nice. Make room for Leo. Thanks. It's that old Virgo trait, you know. All right, so now let's go for Leo's letters here. Boy, there's a lot of them. All right, he's got one L. Why can't people name their kids Bob Smith? <laughs> yeah, I know. Jeez. <laughs> Make it so much easier for those us numerologists later <laughs> on. Okay, we had one E. So we got an L and an E. We've got three O's, it looks like. So one, two, three. Three O's. We've got an N. There. And N. I feel helpful if I point to each number like I'm doing <laughs> like something. You're doing something, right? <laughs> thank you. Thank you for pointing, Steve. You're welcome. We've got two A's. Two A's. We've got two R's. One, two. R. We've got <laughs> two D's. One, two. D. And two I's. Where's that I? One, two. I's. And C. There. C. P here. P is that and everything? That looks like everything. All right, we got all them right. all. All right, so he's got five, six, seven, another three, another one, and five. Okay, we can get rid of all that. Okay, so we are working our way down the line. A lot of, lot of numbers. Uh, a lot to look at so far. Next thing we'll look at is effectiveness. Mm -hmm.